FSN Radio. It's all about what's next. Go to FinancialSurvivalNetwork.com and sign up for your free weekly newsletter. You'll also get three free reports. The Financial Survival Network. It's all about what's next. Welcome, and you are listening to the Financial Survival Network. I'm Kerry Lutz. It's 8.30.18. We're almost done with August, and usually summer months are very slow. Not so this time. Blame it on the president. Blame it on the news cycle. I don't know, but things are definitely different now for sure. And as always, we invite you to become part of the show, to join in the dialogue. Send us an email, and hey, we might even read it on air or have you on air to talk about it. KL at com is the email address. So terrorism, you look at it around the world, there's attacks constantly in Western Europe. She keep those, uh, keep those migrants coming because they're just, they just want jobs and they're peace loving people, right? Sure thing. Well, author of a new book is on with us now. The name of the book is Rise in Defense of Judeo-Christian Values and Freedom. Bridget Gabriel, your New York Times bestselling author, leading expert on Islamic terrorism, and chairman of ACT for America, the largest national security grassroots organization in America. Welcome to the show. I Thank you, Carrie. I'm delighted to be with you. And Bridget, so... We got this situation in the world, and it seems like half the world's politicians want to ignore it, and then others, like President Trump, are confronting it actively. Tell us what the problem is here, and what are the solutions? Well, um, President Trump has definitely came on the world stage and really caused a ruckus, uh, to say the least. Uh, 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 He has stood with our friends. He is standing with our friends. Uh, Our enemies are on their toes because they understand uh, that he doesn't mess around. You can take his word to the bank, and when he says do not cross a red line, it means do not cross a red line lest you will be punished. Uh, And the wonderful thing about President Trump is our enemies do not understand what he's going to do, when he's going to do it, and what to expect out of him. But they know one thing. They respect his ability to act and make a difference. Uh, He is definitely a no-nonsense person. He is definitely a a huge change from the Obama uh, administration. Uh, But I wrote my book, Rise, uh, because I wanted to educate Americans about what we are dealing with, uh, not only in the United States, but also also overseas in Western civilization and the threat to Western civilization. And that's why I titled the book Rise in Defense of Judeo-Christian Values and Freedom, because the Judeo-Christian values are the bedrock of Western civilization, are the foundation of Western civilization. And today we are seeing those freedoms and those values under attack, whether it's our freedom of speech, the ability to express ourselves, whether it is even the ability to debate each other. You know, whatever happened in the old days when we are able to come around the table and reason together and debate ideas and understand that while we can debate each other passionately about issues we don't agree with, we walk away agreeing to disagree respectfully with each other. That is gone. And that's exactly why we need to wake up as a country and understand the threats that are facing our country and what we can do about it to make a difference. And I think that's well put. <clears throat> President Trump, the first Western leader ever to get up before the cameras and say, Western civilization is worth fighting for. It's worth saving the contributions that it's made to the world. And look, it's not without problems for sure. But and really, when we're talking about Western civilization, we're talking about Judeo-Christian values, but they go way back. They go back to the Greeks, go back to the Romans. And Trump is the first president and the first leader in Western world to say, uh, 
where would we be without Western civilization? Now, your anti-American types would say, well, there would be a lot more Indians, uh, Native Americans, as they like to politically correctly call them, PC term. Native Americans would be, uh, you know, ruling North America and South America. But, you know, that's just a, a total misapprehension, misunderstanding of of what happened in in the colonization, the the, uh, the exploration of North and South America. But the point is, Trump is saying, hey, Western civilization, you cannot deny its contributions and you can't deny the values, the ability for the individual to thrive. The forces that are up against Western civilization, how would you describe them, Bridget? Oh, are immense. And right now, our major threat is illegal immigration, as well as illegal migration, which includes refugee resettlement, chain migrations, etc. And we are seeing this happen in Europe, as well as in the United States, and as well as different uh, uh, Western nations, whether Australia, whether Canada, in different places. In my book, Rise, I have a chapter titled Replacement Civilization, where, like you said, what made what made America and the West great is the freedom, is the ability to thrive, to exchange ideas, to build, to prosper, to send a man to the moon, uh, to change the world and for the better, to create music, to let the human spirit uh, feel free, to create, to write, uh, to exchange ideas. And what we're seeing right now is we are importing into our nation people from third world countries who are not assimilating, whether in Europe or in the United States, and in. Instead of uh, encouraging these people and bringing them in, 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 in uh, stages where we can actually control the ability to help them to assimilate better into our culture, they are coming in droves beyond our ability to actually help them assimilate into our culture, but actually bring our culture down to their standards. I'll give you an, a perfect example of what I'm talking about, uh, and this is going to relate to the United States. The city of Denver in May 2017 passed an ordinance that made defecation on the street corners and on the street in public legal. And the reason why the city of Denver felt it is so wonderful to, to bring back such an old ancient practice of basically squatting down and defecating on public because they have a problem with illegal immigration as well as a lot of refugees coming into the country from different parts of the world. So the city of Denver has a bigger problem than San Francisco and Philadelphia. And because if you defecate on the street, because in your culture, it's okay to just, you know, pop down and do it on the side of the road, that is an arrestable offense. And for that, once you are arrested, the police can deport you um, from the country. And so right now, we are lowering our standards as a civilized nation in the 21st century and adopting third world practices in our nation because we do not want to offend or report people who are in this country either illegally or have been brought in as refugees from third world countries. And instead of us enforcing our laws to make them adopt to our nation, we are changing that. And this is exactly why I go into detail in my book, Rise. Not because we are against people from other nations, but because we need to control our immigration system to a point where we can help help them improve their lives, learn better, assimilate easier, make it easier on them and on their children to come and assimilate and grow and prosper and, be, and give them better lives instead of not only not improving their lives, but bringing our lives down. Yeah, very true. So the uh, left would like you to believe that all civilizations are equal and that, uh, hey, what's the difference between... Uh, Islam or Western civilization or Oriental Chinese, it's all equal. But that's not true, is it? 
Uh, that is that is not true. Uh, in our Judeo-Christian value system, we do not teach uh, we do not teach to kill our daughters if they dishonor the family. When you're dealing with a culture, and especially right now when we are seeing a rise of Islamic immigration into the West and especially into the United States, I'll just talk about America from now on because obviously we are in America. We are seeing a rise of honor killing. We are seeing a rise of female genital mutilation in our culture. We do not genitally mutilate our daughters because we do not want them to be uh, sexually active because of the honor of the family. The CDC, the Center for Disease Control, issued a report in 2016 saying that 513,000 girls in the United States, over half a million girls, Carrie, in the United States, are have either undergone female genital mutilation or at the threat of undergoing female genital mutilation because of the rise of Islamic immigration into the country. Now, nobody wants to talk about it because, oh, that's Islamic and that's cultural and we should not talk about other these things. Who would have thought that in the United States in the 21st century we're going to turn a blind eye to people that forcibly genitally mutilate their seven-year-old daughter because they do not want her to be westernized, uh, westernized and they do not want her to enjoy sexual pleasure lest she is um, uh, uh, promiscuous after marriage. So this is where we are as a nation. Our value system is 10 times better than, than the value systems of people that we are importing who have no compunction of even killing their daughters in the name of honor because their daughter simply decided to put on makeup and date a Western person and wanting to live a Western life. This is what I'm saying about um, us having to deal with issues that we are importing into the country. Look, we have had people come into America before. We had had people for 300 years coming into the United States, from all nations, from all backgrounds, from all religious backgrounds, from all languages, all skin color, etc. But we did not have the problems that we are dealing with today. 200 years ago, we were not talking in the United States about parents genitally mutilating their daughters or killing their daughters or justifying the killings of infidels in the name of their religion. This is an issue that we are tackling today, and we must understand why we must come together as a nation why we must secure and enforce our laws. I'm not saying write new laws. I'm just saying enforce the laws that we have on the books. Yeah, and that's what I detail and rise. What makes my book so unique is I not only lay the problem in each chapter, whether I'm talking about the death of free speech, which is the title of a chapter discussing the free speech in America, uh, whether I'm talking about uh, immigration or replacement civilization, whether I'm talking about the leftist Islamist coalition or the cost of war. At the end of every chapter, I have a section titled Rise Up and Act, where I give you three things you can do under 10 minutes to make a difference for the country. And, you know, make no mistake, it's a cultural war. This alliance between the left and the Islamofascists, what is that about? Oh, my goodness. You know, the enemy of my enemy is my friend. And what we are seeing right now is basically uh, leftist organizations working together with Islamic organizations in America who both have the same end goal, to sabotage America, and basically uh, each one is working for their own interest. And so when you have people like CARE, the Council on American Islamic Relations, which is a designated terrorist group uh, by the United Arab Emirates, it's the United Arab Arab Emirates designate you as a terrorist group, then there is something to look at here. Uh, CARE is also an unindicted co-conspirator in the largest terrorism financing trial in the history of the United States. And when you see them working together with the ACLU, where the ACLU, for example, is suing the city of New York for monitoring mosques that have suspicious activity. Mm -hmm. And, you know, they came together and they pressured the city to drop the monitoring of mosques in 2000. 2014, they worked with Linda Sorsour, who is now the darling of the left. You know, she is the co-chair organizer of the Women's March in Washington, D.C. This is how you end up with Saipov uh, from Uzbekistan this year mowing down people with his car on the streets of New York. He came out of the same mosque that was under surveillance by the FBI. If the FBI was continuing to survey that, that, that mosque, maybe we could have spared the lives of these people that were mowed down 
thrown like ants by him uh, on the street of New York. So uh, this is what we're seeing. We are also seeing uh, groups like the Southern Poverty Law Center, uh, uh, the uh, ACLU, MoveOn.org, Organizing for Action, which is Obama's uh, major grassroots organization, How, uh, Planned Parenthood, basically funding Linda Sarsour, literally not only supporting her uh, with working together as a coalition, but mm-hmm. actually funding financially the Absolutely. movement of Linda Sarsour, who is a devout Islamist, linked to terrorism. Uh, her mentor is Imam Siraj Wahaj, which is an unindicted co-conspirator in the First World Trade Center bombing, uh, a notorious Islamic imam, um, and, you know, with links to Palestinian terrorists. Uh, family, her family members are serving in Israeli jails on charges of terrorism. Yet, this is now what we are facing, uh, basically our enemies coming together to work against the country. Yeah, it's definitely disconcerting. A lot of what you're saying, you know, you can't help but be aware of. But uh, there is a new sheriff in town, and things are definitely different now. And the fight has really been taken to the enemies, and the infiltrators are being purged out of the government. I believe there are a lot of infiltrators under the last administration. So there is hope here, isn't there? Oh, absolutely. And the hope is because America woke up. Uh, America came together and said, enough is enough. You can fool some of the people some of the time. You cannot fool all the people all the time. And this is exactly why you mm-hmm. saw a red wave sweeping across the country with the election of President Trump. Uh, people from all sides and those in the middle said, enough is enough. Well, something is broken in the country. We need to come together. We need to vote. We We need to be involved. We need to be engaged. We need to be active. And this is exactly why action is so important. And in my book, Rise, the last chapter is all about action. Everything you can do as a citizen to make a difference for the country. You see, Carrie, on our side, people are uh, informed. They are educated. Obviously, every single person listening to this broadcast are educated about the issues. You talk to people on the left, you ask them, tell me what socialism is. You're a socialist. Tell me why. They cannot even explain socialism to you, but they are extremely active and organized. So on our side, we don't lack education. We lack what to do with the education. A lot of people say, I'm so frustrated. I know there's a problem, but I do not know what to do about it. Well, with my book, Rise, I lay out a plan, simple things, how to write letters to the editors, sample letters to the Mm -hmm. editors, how to find out about books coming, uh, bills coming down for a vote in Congress so you can make your voice heard. Even though we have President Trump in office, elected officials still need to hear from you about bills to support the president. Let's not forget the president needs the support of Congress in order for him to be able to uh, pass his agenda and change the country and pass bills that will secure the country, that will protect the country, that will make the country more prosperous. So while we have him in office, now is the time to apply pressure on our elected officials to stand with the president and support his agenda and pass the bills that need to be passed to protect the country. Absolutely. Could not have said it better myself. So we want to get your book. Uh, We want to check out your writing, your work. Uh, Where do we find where do we find you on the Web, first of all? Uh, the book is available on Amazon.com. You can go, uh, I hope, immediately and order the book and help me spread the word. Uh, you can also find uh, my organization and find me at actforamerica.org. Actforamerica.org. And right there you'll learn all about us and what we do as an organization. And you'll have also access to purchase the book on the website. All right. Excellent. And we'll have a link to your site in the show notes to this interview on financialsurvivalnetwork.com. Just send us an email, kl at kerrylutz.com and get involved. We love hearing from you. We love getting your emails and reading them first thing in the morning, highlight of my day. So the Twitter handle is at Kerry Lutz and the Facebook page, Financial Survival Network. And while you're at it, uh, if you're on YouTube, click the subscribe button up there and click the bell so you get notified and keep listening to the show. Hey, Bridget, really appreciate you coming on. Good luck on your fight. Keep it up. Thank you. Thank you very much. Have a great day. 
FSN Radio. It's all about what's next. Go to FinancialSurvivalNetwork.com and sign up for your free weekly newsletter. You'll also get three free reports. The Financial Survival Network. It's all about what's next.